for my own group, uh, obviously. Um, been doing this 20 years. For those of you that do know me or seen some of my stuff, um, we've changed a lot of our media aspects over the last year or so. Um, <clears throat> one in part is this book and going through some of the processes um, with story brand. Um, one of the things that we unfortunately don't do well is telling stories in order to attract more clientele. Um, does anybody have any favorite brands that tell good stories? Um, I heard one this morning, um, USAA, it's a couple talking about getting home from vacation and their water heater breaking and USAA taking care of them and getting their stuff resolved right away. So it was a story and it was, it was told in that story format which gives it a much greater impact when you're hearing it from that standpoint rather than just, we're USAA, we took care of their claim. <clears throat> so here's what we're going to go through today. How important your story is to your consumer. Um, how important it is to kind of break up your life and different stories that you can tell and relate with people. Because what we want to try to do is encourage empathy, which is the connection to clients. And it's really important to find that connection when it comes down to, and I'll go through a little bit of my story to show you how that relates. How to build great stories. Um, if I, uh, Kelly will give me everybody's emails, I will email you, and it's also at storybrand.com, um, the story branding worksheet on how to create a good story. Um, and we're gonna go through the, that process as well. Quality content and media, this is kind of the last piece of it. If you're gonna tell stories, it's really important to invest in quality media when it comes down to it. Um, this year I had the privilege of meeting Josiah, who's in the back of the room running around with the camera. Um, really important for the connection with your clients through stories and through the quality of content. So one thing I have to ask of you guys we get going is be interactive, ask questions, interrupt me if you want to. It's all good, um, I'm here for fun. Um, I'm here from the things that I've learned this year to hopefully impact your businesses. Um, that's why I'm here. That's the only reason. Um, the power of empathy, like I said, it's, it's to connect. You want to be able to connect and relate with your clients um, with social media. Remember that social media, as you're going through it, you're trying to make connections to an audience that you don't necessarily know yet, or a lead that's cold that comes through Facebook or comes through Instagram, they are trying to relate with you. And, and some of you, if you haven't, a lot of us, when we first meet somebody, we go through and we Facebook stalk them. And our <laughs> Facebook posts and the things that we do are giving the power of empathy to connect with those people to see if they can connect with you. Too many clicks on this thing. Okay, so empathy, this is one of the things that, that I teach in my Limitless Project course. Um, I want to connect with you on this level, so I want you to hear the story when it comes down to this being real estate agents. Um, this is my dad and the investor, which I usually relate to as Satan Spawn, um, that's blacked out. But here's, here's a deal that I want you to think about. Imagine being in the business for 40 years, in the real estate business that we all know and love and enjoy, and working with an investor for the last five years of your life and devoting all of your time, all of your energy, on the promise, on the sheer promise that when he went to sell his 349 homes, that he was gonna come back to you and make sure that that happened, make sure that he honored his promise, right? We've all had those investors, we've all had those people that promise the world and don't ever keep those promises. Um, when my dad passed four years ago, um, that man took his 349 properties and went to another property management company, is now selling them off one at a time. I want to relate with you from the standpoint of your clients and the people that you connect with. They're going to make promises and things that they won't keep, and that's that's what happened here, um, and it's creating relation because we've all worked with those clients and worked tirelessly for them to go buy a for sale by owner, buy from another agent, whatever the case may be. So that's how we create relationships and we create empathy when we're trying to connect with clients. Your stories. When you're talking on um, any of your platforms, no matter what it is, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, you want to find a way to be vulnerable, to be valuable, or be relatable, and be you. This is the one thing that uh, I was taught not to do early on is um, my dad felt that if I showed up at an appointment that I needed to be in the long sleeve shirt and the slacks and this, 
or the dress shoes, and everybody has their way to relate to people. Uh, my relationship with my clients is very real. If you see me in your house or you see me in the grocery store, you're gonna see the same person. It doesn't matter what it is. So they wanna be able to relate. They wanna be able to connect with you on their level or on your level, whichever it is. And being vulnerable comes back to this story, this picture of my wife and kids. Um, this is actually at a time that uh, we had just lost everything, had been foreclosed on. Um, we tell that story very openly to create connection with people because we've been there. I know what it's like to sit in a house where you don't know what the answer is. I know what it's like to not have any money. Um, I know it's like have a million dollars worth of debt and not know what the hell to do next. And again, I tell that story quite a bit because I want people to relate that this stuff happens and I want you to know that I'm real and I wasn't spoon fed with a silver spoon my entire life after being third generation real estate. So let's get into how to build great stories. I love this topic. Um, I love what I've learned this year and I loved how we've been able to interject it into um, our presentations and our social media and it's gotten better with time. Um, my stories were terrible at first, um, so kind of, this unfortunately is our industry, is we talk a lot about I'm the number one real estate agent in my neighborhood. I'm the number one, I'm, 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 rather than figuring out how to do this. We want to guide our clients to being the hero. We are not the hero in our industry. It's very noisy. And if you can go back to the empathy word, you want to look at empathizing with your clients by being helping to guide them through the process. And I think that's one of the things that we could all do a lot better in the industry is taking the time to really lay out the process and the guiding nature of what we do. So what happens is, is that we don't spend a lot of time, we get a lead that comes in and we wanna get them in the car and we wanna go show them houses, but we don't take time to guide them through the process. And what happens is, is that at some point in time, it becomes a client failure and you become the bad guy because we didn't take the time to guide them through the process, through the Binzer process, the expectations, all those pieces. And so we really want to take the time to guide our clients to them being the hero. So this right here is taken directly from Building a Story Brand. Um, I highly recommend, he's, he's great either um, in the book or Audible. Um, I've listened to the book probably four or five times. Um, he's an amazing listen to, he's not one of those boring guys that you want to fall asleep to listening to. Um, so what he does is he builds, and this is all on the story branding worksheet as well, that's all available online, it's all free. It's a great way to really think about what you're doing. So your character, there's always a character in the story, um, which is gonna be your buyer, your seller, your investor, whoever that person is, is the character. When you meet the character, they have a problem, right? So their problem is, is they don't know, they, especially in, in our market, it's a very noisy market. So their problem is, is where do they go? Who do they talk to? Where do they start? And that's, that's the process of buying or selling and leading them in those directions by helping them solve the problem. But first, they have to meet a guide. You are the guide. You are the guide through the noisy market, through all the different things that we do and all the different things that we face. And we really want you to look at how do we guide the consumer and how do we walk them through um, the industry that we're in. Once you once they've met the guide, you're going to give them a plan. And the plan kind of goes back to what I was talking about before, is the plan is your process to guiding them through and to a success. Um, you know, whether it's your listing consult or your buying consult, you're wanting to show them the guide and your processes to get them to have that calls to action, which is to buy or sell a house. Because the guide, what it's doing is you're showing them your expertise, you're getting them to believe in your process and your method, and to relate with you and how you're going to get them there. As we're guiding them, we're gonna help them avoid failure. Um, I just put up there, you know, avoiding failure is not getting the contract, not getting the house they want, or not selling the home um, when they want to. So we have an accepted contract, and that ends with success. So it's a successful closing. Um, successful, successful purchase of a home. And this is really where we're guiding them to is that, that end with success in mind versus some of the different things that we don't do as far as, you know, we tend to 
meet with somebody, we meet with a client, and it's, um, and I know, in fact, funny story, um, I remember watching my dad. Um, do all you guys review listening presentations kind of, do you go off strictly scripts or do you actually kind of go with the moment and the client and the flow of the conversation? <clears throat> the reason I say that is I used to watch my dad, um, very old school, we used to use roll paper thermal fax when I got in the business, those types of things, pagers, big block phones. Um, and I remember my dad one night at a listing appointment, he would swear to God he would open a three ring binder that was like 55 pages long and 12 sections and he would read almost word for word <laughs> what was there. One night he fell asleep reading it. 10 o'clock at night, he's out cold and I'm kicking him under the table. Um, he was trying to guide, but he didn't, he, he wasn't empathizing with the client, figuring out what they needed. And so we need to be really careful that when we do guide people, that we're guiding them based on what they want and how we can get them there. Because every client has a different story and a different way. It's one of the reasons that you know we shifted our logo and our brand into a handcrafted real estate solution because I believe that everybody has a different way to get what they want and where they want to go and we have to be able to adapt with that with their story. So what happens is, well let me just put all these up here. It's easier. This, this is where we're going to create influence and I want to make sure that I'm clear on the story branding is because there's two different things. Your story branding is going to come from a way of advertising almost commercial like because what happens is we spend a lot of time trying to get straight to relationship from lead and there's no time to connect with them through stories, through testimonials, through those types of things. So building a story and building a basis of stories that you can consistently share through Facebook, through social, through emails is really important and especially important with your past clients because it's not just the typical age old, you know, look what we're doing, here's my newsletter. Um, none of us, at least I don't, I don't remember the last time I read somebody's newsletter that came in because it's just full of mindless stuff. It's meant to just be in front of you rather than um, somebody said this weekend that they're posts and their engagement through their emails is meant to be a slip and slide. Once you start, you just can't stop and you want to continue reading based on the stories, the captions and those types of things. So it's really important that we understand and, and I think we all agree that we're living in a very noisy market with leads. We're all after the same leads, um, either through Facebook ads, through posting, those types of things, through email. and we want to find a way to connect. So we connect by telling stories and we're boosting stories in order to create an audience in order to influence that audience to eventually create a relationship which eventually turns into a customer and that's kind of the stair stepping um, into this. One of the examples I'll give you is that um, we do a lot of different videos and we've cut a lot of those videos into 30 to 60 second clips and we don't use those as Facebook ads we actually do those as boosts. Spend a lot less money boosting stuff, which is causing you just to kind of randomly come up with people and connect with them. So then they see different phases, different commercials that we're doing, rather than a targeted Facebook ad, which sometimes we're targeting people that have no desire to buy or sell a house or any of those other things. So you become noisy when it comes down to it. So let's talk about story. Um, I talked to you about Relatable, um, you guys will love this clip, it's actually one of my, my best clips from Facebook. Um, the video was actually viewed more than 20,000 times. Um, it was a story, there's no call to action to it, but it makes me relatable. Um, this actually happened in December last year, um, so I clipped it out. But. Uh, for a nice, warm, blessed meal of donuts and coffee. 
Any questions? So that was actually one morning in December, a house that we just acquired full of stuff. Um, I, I carry a loaded firearm 90% of the time, and I walked into the house and I started hearing things, and I had four drug addicts come out of different hallways that morning. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I left them there for a week and gave them donuts and coffee and hung out with them for a little while trying to figure out what their story was. Um, it was a very relatable video. It showed my compassion. It showed me being a human being. But there was no call to action for anything. It was just showing me being vulnerable and relatable. Um, going on to, from story, so this is kind of the path. So I met Gina last year um, at Lewis House Summit of Greatness in Columbus, Ohio, actually two months before that video. Um, we connected out there, found out that we both lived in Phoenix. Um, she actually saw that story in December, and she gathered from the video that I bought houses that were in distress. And um, she called. But here was Gina's problem. Sometimes I think we go in and we forget to really relate to our clients to really see where they're at. Because some people are embarrassed about their situation. Some people need to be guided through the process of what's actually available to them. Um, Gina was, by the time I got done listening to her, she really, when I got there, she wanted me to buy her house. Um, she was going to leave approximately $60,000 on the table, and she was okay with that. But here was her reason. Her problem was that she was running out of her severance package. And she wasn't able to hold the house through the escrow period and the time needed, and also to have the pool replastered. So I finally got to the root of how I was gonna guide her through the process. Um, she didn't have a job at the time, a uh, single mom, and rather than looking at the process of just buying the house, it was trying to ask the right questions to get her to open up. And once she finally opened up, I figured out what it was, and we, uh, we figured out how to solve the problem with her. And um, at the end of the day, she ended up getting top dollar for the house um, for the neighborhood. And uh, she netted an extra $60,000, and in that time also, she got another job, and we ended up selling her a new build as well. But it was, <clears throat> my point to that is, is that we went through the story, she saw the story, she empathized with it, she called looking for a solution, because I've influenced her now, and then we went on to build a relationship, which ultimately turned into a customer for life. So this was, this was her and I at Summit of Greatness this year. Um, this was her getting her keys. But the cool thing was is to sit back and look at the guiding process. It was, it was an amazing story. I still love the story. We had a lot of fun. Um, and it created a friend for life as well. And a walking, talking billboard at the end of the day. Because we took the time to guide through the process and not sell. Um, I don't know if any of you use the term. I really enjoy the term when I'm talking to people. Is, um, I don't sell anymore. I'm simply there to serve. I can't connect with everybody. I can't work with everybody. We're gonna have clients that we're just not gonna connect with and that's okay. If you genuinely believe that I'm there to serve you, then we're gonna get along fine and I don't have my interest in mind, I have your interest in mind, which is how do we guide you through the problem and how do we get you to the solution. Um, stories versus reviews. So I want you to imagine this for a second. What if you could coach your clients at the beginning of the process when you first meet them to understand that you're doing some social posting and you're coaching them through that process and they understand it. But you can also ask them to write a story as a review rather than reviewing you. And this is kind of what I mean. These are two reviews that we have. Um, So Jason and his wife lived in their house for 20 years. They decided to finally time to move. And uh, they were moving to another town. They wanted to sell their home. We were looking for the fastest, easiest, stress-free sale we could get. Uh, handcrafted is truly what you get with the Valentine Group. All of our fears about the stressful home selling process would be completed, mitigated by the Valentine Group. I cannot imagine a more stress-free experience in selling our home. We were so grateful for the respect we were paid <laughs> and how easy the process was. That's a story. That's their story. They, they were guided through the process. Um, you know, their pain points we figured out. They had four dogs, two sick parents, and moving to Tucson. Um, so we were able to solve their problem. We actually acquired that property from them, made it super simple because they didn't want to put it on the market. 
versus these types of reviews that we all get on Zillow. Brad's a really good friend of mine, but I'm glad he took two seconds on his phone to give me a review. It doesn't say the same thing and you don't empathize. If you're the consumer, you're not really empathizing with this. You're not connecting with that person versus the story. So if you can encourage your clients to try to tell their story in a review versus just asking, will you go review me? Try asking them to go tell their story and how you guided them through it. And I think it'll make a big difference because what you've just asked them to do is you've asked them to be the hero of their own story. Because when we're asking for our own reviews, it's for our own purpose in order to get a review, in order to utilize that for our own marketing and advertising purposes. So it's really important that you really kind of flip the script on what we're so used to in the industry and really look at how can we take these types of things and utilize them to the best of our ability. Come here, Clicky. Okay. We have three types of currency at any given time. We have money, relationships, and audience. Um, I heard this recently and uh, kind of went through it and really put it into um, our industry. What happens in our industry is we spend a lot of money to try to build an audience to hopefully create a relationship, right? So lots of money on, on Facebook, on Zillow, on all these things in hopes that we connect with somebody that's going to make that ROI be worth that lead at the end of the day. And here's kind of the reverse of it. Try reversing the currency that, that's here. We want to attract an audience, and you can attract an audience a lot cheaper than you can a lead. And an audience is definitely going to be uh, a more time sensitive thing. It's going to take longer to create that audience. Um, but your story is going to start creating that audience. You're going to start, um, or they're going to start empathizing with you and who you are and what that looks like, which in turn is going to create relationships with people, and we're talking about warm relationships. We're not talking about cold relationships, which we're so used to in the amount of money that we spend on leads. Um, you know, we've become a society of big bank of leads that we can keep calling and harassing in order to get something, hopefully, to work out of it, rather than spending some time trying to build our audience in order to establish relationships. <clears throat> Money. <laughs> right there it is money um, the audience the relationships is going to lead to money which is ultimately your commission your paycheck whatever you want to call it at the end of the day um, and I'm not saying to discard paying for leads but I think this is something in addition that you can take some away from paying from too many leads and really focus on building your audience and the nice thing is building your audience is free for the most part Okay. This, this is what happens when we get a lead. Um, I worked a lot of leads over the years. Um, now, even more so than other because the information is free. They can find anything they want online whenever they want online, right? But what we try to do is once somebody clicks on a house and we give them a couple of pictures and then in order for them to continue to see the house, we want their information. And then we go to the speed to lead which I know is against what most people teach, but I'm just gonna give you my opinion because I believe in relationships, um, not in stuffing it down somebody's throat. Um, this is what happens. So this, this truck right here is a lead. They just clicked on something, they wanted to see the house, they're curious. We instantly try to take the truck from the merge lane to the fast lane in 2.2 seconds with a phone call, a text, and whatever lead generation piece that you have or whatever system that's been created versus taking that truck and using the stories, the emails, the different things, the testimonials, to guide them from one lane to the next to finally get you 
to create that relationship to get them to ultimately purchase a home or for you to be a guide for them. And so I think it's really important right now. It's something that uh, I would say re we're really good at is just creating relationships organically versus the push. And we create those relationships organically by these stories and different things through our social media, through email, um, through conversations with people. So this is probably going to be the most important part when it comes down to all this because we spend a lot of time sending stuff out, but we spend so much money sending it out that we take too much money there and we don't spend enough money on quality. And what happens is you spend a lot of money putting a lot of crap out and then when the crap is out, somebody sees it and they don't come back to it because it wasn't quality to begin with, right? So I entered on this journey last year and I didn't know where it was going to take me. So this is one of the pieces that is, is really important that I would ask all of you to do in Venture Out. Get outside of our industry. We go to too many real estate conferences, we go to too many things, and it's a lot of regurgitated stuff. I love the industry, but let's be real. It has to do with relationships. We all know how to buy and sell a house and represent a client, um, but we're not influencing people, especially online, and creating a relationship. So um, I ventured out a year ago, uh, Chris Harder, uh, where is he? Um, somewhere up there. Um, actually, I think he got cut off in this picture. Are you guys um, knee deep in some of the social media influencers out there today, as far as their podcasts, their books, their different things? So I joined Chris Harder's mastermind last year. Um, it was an expensive fee that I paid for in December. I really didn't know what it was. And the term mastermind in our industry is so overused um, that I was a little bit um, reluctant to do it. But these are all the people I ended up meeting this year. So just start at the top because I think it's important that you understand that if you can get into some of these spaces and really see what some of these people do, it will influence your business from the real estate side. And you can take the same principles and concepts that these people have. Um, and implement them into your own business. So, um, up at the top left, um, that's Cole Hatter. If anybody of you know Cole Hatter, um, he is a master wordsmith. He is a master salesperson from the stage. Um, you're familiar with Dan Merrill. He does a big time real estate investor course. Um, Cole Hatter's been selling for the, from the stage for, for Dan Merrill. He has an 80% close rate on a $50,000 product in a room of two to 300 people. A lot of what he talked about this year was changing our words in order to impact the response rate of what we're doing. Because a lot of us, it's just the same old words. Um, I actually, I love what he said. You know, he, he talked about, um, and I thought about this very much so for real estate, which is rather than telling somebody what you want them to hear about your business, getting them to understand that they're gonna love the experience they have working with you and they're going to enjoy the results that they get when they get into their new home. Rather than the reverse, which is, I'm gonna show you how to get into your new home, and we're gonna go through this process, and we forget to use words that, that they're going to embrace. Um, he was amazing, I actually saw him on Saturday, spent some time with him at our mastermind group. Um, so just keep that in mind, your copy, and we get into something else in a minute on that. Uh, Bedros Killian's the next guy. Um, he owns Fit Body Bootcamp, which is a worldwide franchise. Um, something like 1,700 clubs. Um, I spent some time with him last week. Just an amazing influence when it comes down to his business and understanding the value add that you can get to your business and you can increase with different things that you can different things you can add on and add into your business. Um, just wrote a book called Man Up. Very good. Uh, Danette May. She is a social influencer on Instagram. Um, she is currently. Her influence reach audience, um, I think she has 750,000 Instagram followers. Um, they have a subscription-based business um, for fitness stuff. I think that nets somewhere around $465,000 a month. And just seeing what they're doing to influence online and you watch what they're doing, what they're writing, what they're posting is very influential to all of our businesses. And I think it's really important that we look at all these. Um, Tom Bayou. Um, amazing guy talking about mindset. 
mindset when we're in this business can be we can be up, we can be down. Um, this guy went from not being able to get out of his bed nine years ago to get his sweatshirt when he was cold to um, finding his passion and his purpose, which his mom and sister were both morbidly obese and he wanted to create a protein bar that would work for them and he created the Quest Bar. Um, so if you're familiar with Quest Bar, he sold that company to Nestle last year for a billion dollars. Um, but more importantly, it's his mindset and his influence when it comes down to it, not that he sold it. The great thing that I heard from him this last weekend was when that money hit their bank, they just went about doing their business. The money didn't change them. It didn't influence them to be anything other than what they wanted to do, which was have an impact on their industry and keep going. So um, that was great. Tim's story, he's known as uh, Hollywood's um, spiritual coach. Uh, he was responsible for Robert Downey Jr. coming from coming out of jail and going through his change and his process. Drew Canoli, um, he owns a company called Organifi. It's a hundred million dollar company. Uh, great when it comes down to mindset, body, health, all those things. Marshall Morris uh, runs a sixty million dollar online company for called I Love Dogs. Um, <laughs> swear to God, um, super cool guy. I get to hang out with him over Thanksgiving this year. Um, the cool thing about him is he found his purpose. He was two, two tours in Iraq, I believe, um, came back, founded the dog food company, whatever he does, the online thing, but then he started Pets for Vets. And he's got this great story that influences. And you talk about influencing a product and a brand, and that's what all these people do really, really well, is they tell really good story in order to influence you to create the audience, and it's really very inspiring. So he's got a story. Um, very large burly guy um, that is missing a limb and he connected him with this little dog that's also missing a limb and you go through his story and like almost like brings tears to your eyes because he's kneeled down and the dog's nose to nose and um, just amazing what he's done and finding his purpose and his passion um, Lewis Howes if you're familiar with Lewis um, he did a book called The Summit of Greatness or School of Greatness great book I highly recommended it this is kind of where it all started for me was with Lewis. When I got out of, out of the real estate space, um, I jumped in last minute trip to Columbus, Ohio. My wife asked me, why are you going to Columbus? Mm -hmm. um, and he created a very small audience, but a very influential, impactful group of people <laughs> that are looking to increase, increase their influence, inspire others, and help each other change and be more successful. Um, Great guy to follow, especially on social. The reason I bring all these up is because if you look at every one of these people, their desire is to have a huge impact. It has nothing to do with their net worth, um, and it has everything to do with the influence that they have with people. Um, Chris Harder, who runs the mastermind that I'm in, his saying, he runs a podcast called For the Love of Money. Um, when good people make great money, they do great things. And I think that that's one of the things that I always look at when we're doing our stuff is that the more money I make and the more influence I have, the greater things that we can do in our community, um, our church and our families when it comes down to it. So, you know, Grant Cardone says that, you know, it's our duty and our obligation to be successful at the end of the day, at the end of the day. Here's some things that are, are really important. I'll kind of expound on them a little bit. If you guys have questions, please ask. Um, the quality of content is more important than your ad spend. Um, so do you guys mind if I show you a quick testimonial that Josiah put together? This kind of goes along with this. Um, Does anybody have any questions so far? <clears throat> Is anything useful so far? <laughs> oh, it's downloaded. Okay. I'll keep talking for a second while I'm doing that. Um, 
There are a ton of resources between professional photographers, between um, videographers, people like Josiah was actually doing an intern office. Um, we ended up hiring him full time uh, because I think it's that important. I spend a lot of time during the week creating content um, in order to have an influence on our audience. Um, the quality what comes out, I know you guys have all seen it, we've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly content wise. We could all go through people's Facebook page and puke <laughs> half the time because some of it's embarrassing. Um, it's just extremely important that we take that time. Um, it's coming. <clears throat> there are some things which I was going to get into in a minute. Um, Last year we saw, if you, if you watch the influencers, they spend a lot of money on professional photography and it's not staged photography, it's not pictures of, of you and your family, those types of things. They are um, photography that you can use that relates to people, you can tell stories with. Um, it's awkward, um, we were out yesterday and you have to practice with this. It's awkward to have somebody follow you around with a camera, it's awkward to have him sit there um, at a meeting with a camera <laughs> in your face and walking around. <laughs> Um, it was even more awkward yesterday. Josiah was laughing when we got back in the car. Um, and please don't do this because I think it's extremely irritating. Um, we were sitting there, I was having a conversation with a past client about selling his house. And the girl behind us overheard and jumped up. She's like, I'm a realtor. I could look something up on MLS for you. And she proceeded to keep interrupting my conversation. Um, it was extremely interesting. And I was like, oh, well, that's exactly the selling process I don't want over there. Um, so it, it does take practice. Are any of you guys doing videos or having things edited or putting things good? Good. Did she do this on camera too? What's that? Did she do this on camera too? Uh, oh, bitch, she... bro. <laughs> 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 would have been awesome. It would have been a do not, do not. So, I, and I say that because, again, it goes back to the quality you put out is going to be the quality response you get from people. Because people um, really pay attention to that stuff. And um, it gives you, so a lot of the influencers do what they call stock photos. They'll do a three month, they'll do a set and they'll have stock photos for three months. It's just different random pictures. Um, don't worry, not like a lot of them, you know, they've got pictures of their Lamborghinis and all this other nonsense, but you have to find pictures that are going to relate. Uh, my wife is our designer, so her stock photos, um, a lot of them are her on job sites. Um, inner tank tops, inner natural element. Um, mine is a lot of being out in the field with clients or doing this, which... <clears throat> which I really enjoy giving back and helping people improve their businesses by the influence that I've had in my life. Okay. I have to give credit to Josiah for this since he slapped it together yesterday. I'm Steve Valentine with the Valentine Group, and you are going to love the experience and the enjoyment of the process of buying or selling real estate with our group. We've served more than 5,000 families in the Valley over the last 20 years, and I wanted to take the time to uh, let you hear Dale's experience when we worked through her handcrafted real estate solution. So let's go talk to Dale. So Dale, how do we meet? Uh, I wanted to sell this place, and um, I didn't want to have to go through and fix everything up, and we were moving very quickly because my husband was transferring. So we walked in, totally just laid back, chill. Our dog As you can see, we didn't stage anything. <laughs> it was the very most raw well, setting we've had. We talked about was that I was here to serve, not sell. And it was that we could really make this a win win transaction for both of us and make it easy for you to be done, no repairs, and get the number that you wanted. It worked for me. Um, it was a win win all the way around. And I know you would talk to some of the other people that um, do the online offers and things like that. Well, you gave us several different options. And uh, not only just options, but ways to reach those options. One was um, a, a second mortgage type thing to finance the repairs, to possibly get the most amount out of the deal, or you could have bought it outright at the number that you had suggested. And then there was just the regular just putting on the market. You, you gave us several different <coughs> solutions. So we really lived up to that handcrafted real estate solution. Absolutely. What I've tried to bring to the table is the all in all. I can go one way or another. And, and I think that that was kind of what you felt, is that you saw both sides of it, you know, on both appointments. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time. 
and I know you're in the midst of moving, moving out of state here, and uh, I just thank you for your time, and I appreciate your referrals and helping us to grow our business so that I can actually serve more people. Because the more I get more in front of more people, the more genuine I can come across, and the more I can help them um, and guide them to the solution that they also want. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate you, too. I hope you enjoyed that tidbit with Gail, and I really want you to enjoy the process of buying or selling or investing in real estate. Uh, through our many experiences, I think that you will hands down enjoy our handcrafted real estate solutions. So please reach out to us, let us know when you need help, and I promise to serve you and not sell you. So, you know, that video shows a number of different things between connecting, it shows quality, and it's something that you know we will put out as a boost, not necessarily a Facebook ad, because I don't. There's there's not a lot of calls to action there for me. Um, I'm looking more for the connections than I am anything else. Um, there is all kinds of people in this industry, especially in the video industry, that you can hire for stuff like this. It doesn't take a full-time person, but it does take some time and some practice and some desire to really want to put it out if that's what you want to do. And it's also important that you be raw and real when you're doing these things. You know, I said earlier, be vulnerable, be relatable, and be you. Um, that's why, you know, my way of relating to people is I'm, I'm not a dressed up person. It's just... Here's who I am. If I can relate to you and we can make that connection, then that's where I want to be because I believe that they already know who I am and there's not a judgment call coming in the door. Um, <clears throat> the building your audience through the lens like we talked about, it's really about practicing, doing things on, you know, Facebook Live is a great way to practice. A um, little scary when you start doing it. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun once you get used to it, though. You, you enjoy the time and the message and the impact that you're having. And keep this in mind, you're looking to impact one person through those videos. And what a lot of us tend to do is we are so focused on likes and comments that we don't realize how many other people are actually seeing our content. You'd be amazed at how many people I talk to that are, are you know, comment, I love what you're doing, I've learned so much, and yet I've never seen a comment, a like, or anything from those people. Just keep in mind, you're looking to impact and connect with people, and the people, there's a lot of people, I mean, let's face it, all of us do this constantly, and we rarely stop, unless it's really important to like or comment, but they're seeing it. And eventually those people will reach out, and you don't even know where it's coming from, and where it's coming from is consistency. How many of you guys post more than three times a week on Facebook, Instagram? Okay. <clears throat> I talked about it earlier in the influence space. Spend, spend some time outside the business. These people all tell great stories. They have great influence. Um, really important to see how they're doing it in order to help you have an influence on your clients and have an impact in, in that type of um, framework. The IG and Facebook story, how many are doing those consistently? Okay, two of you. So here's what it used to be. A couple of years ago, we would post pictures of our salad on Facebook. Nobody cares, <laughs> right? Facebook and Instagram, it started with Snapchat. Um, Snapchat, from what I hear from a lot of industry leaders, um, it's great with the teenagers, not so great with us old people. Um, and Instagram and Facebook stories are a way to get people to relate to your day-to-day -day life. They see you, what you're doing, what you're posting, um, how you're interacting with different things. Um, I think this morning I posted my dogs fighting each other. Um, and it was uh, actually one was just being aggressive with the other one because he wanted to play. And I said, do you ever feel like this in your sales process? You know, because none of us want to be sold. Um, but some of us feel like um, that vulture is there doing that. It's a great way just to put content information out that disappears in 24 hours. Um, versus uh, the post. So I want you to consider this. Um, Instagram, Facebook, great way to relate on a daily basis. Facebook and Instagram posts should be well thought out. They should be well copywritten. And they are they're your billboard that's going to be up forever until you decide to delete it. And even then, you know, Facebook's got it on file. Um, <laughs> it, because this is where... Oh, no. Um, this is where your audience... 
window. This is where your audience comes to connect with you and figure out when they see something from a Facebook ad, a Facebook boost, they're gonna go to Facebook and Instagram and they're gonna look at the value that you can add. When we post or we email, we are either adding value or taking up somebody's space. And we're taking up somebody's space, you're either wasting their time or you're inspiring them or influencing them versus persuading them. So really think is, you know, Facebook, Instagram, these are big advertisements and they're not advertisements for necessarily houses, they're advertisements for connection. Houses are the byproduct of what we do, what we're really trying to do is connect with people. We're trying to connect with people through our stories, through our relationships, um, and again, back through the empathy thing. So when somebody goes through there, I guarantee you by the time they've called you or whatnot, they've already stalked you there. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. When you talk about Facebook and posts and boosting, do you focus on your Facebook business page with that or your personal profile? Yeah, you have to do it through, you have to boost through Facebook business page. Yeah, and um, you get the same clicks on it. Right. Now, do you then take that to your personal yes. page? Yes. Yeah. Because now you're, I mean, and here's, here's a great way to look at it. Your business page is going out to cold leads. You're trying to boost. It's just trying to get in front of people to hopefully show your story, have an influence, create a relationship. Your personal page is to an audience you already have that you're trying to continue the relationship with and continue to impact and influence them by what you're doing. Um, that's why I, I believe when we're doing different things, I think that, um, and again, this is my personal opinion, after spending a year in the influencer space, doing a lot of just listed, just sold, in escrow, you know, with blank pictures, no people, I think it becomes very, very noisy to people. I understand it's social proof, but those are things that are better off put on your page for that type of thing versus it constantly being in your feed because then you, you're not relatable. It's just pictures of houses. Um, the high quality photos and videos. We just saw the video. Really? I can't win today. Apparently, I need more help on the technology side. <clears throat> high quality photos, videos, um, just sincerely important to your image and your brand and what you're doing. So, um, really focus and, and spend some money on doing these things because the higher the quality, the more connection you're going to have uh, versus the lower quality kind of cheapen the experience. Um, something, has anybody ever used a professional copywriter for any of their email campaigns or their posts or anything like that? Um, you'd be amazing or you'd be amazed at the amount of money um, the influencers spend on professional copywriters because one slide of a word one change in a paragraph, one shift in the message can make the response rate increasingly impactful. So there's, you can go to Upwork. Um, Upwork has copywriters ranging from $10 to $100. Um, we have copywriters that look over our email series to see what can be changed, what can be shifted. Um, I came from a background of very long copy. My dad was very long-winded. He, um, he wrote like he talked. So what happens is if it's not above the fold and your message isn't clear, you scroll through it or delete it. Um, so if you think about that and the stuff that we get from different people, if it's not impactful in that first couple of words, that first paragraph or the subject line isn't, it's, it's just going to get lost in the weeds. Um, so you may want to consider looking at somebody that's a professional copywriter, um, which will help you guide the story because sometimes we might even have emails out of order that we don't see because we tend to write emails based on our sales price process. So we're trying to guide them through somewhere, but the reality is one email might be, a, should go in front of another in order to guide them to the process. And, and the sales process as well, when we're looking at our emails and our copy, this is where um, we've, had, we've had a lot of fun this year with it, where we have, um, when I started the podcast, Purpose Driven Real Estate Podcast, it was conversation that I had with my co-host regarding the market, <laughs> regarding different things that we can then go in and insert into different copy. We've also inserted some of our stories and testimonials into different copy, um, which really helps because if you get a copywriter, the picture or the post, they can actually write about it and figure out where they're going to lead that person to connecting with you. Any great questions? Come on. 
So let's just talk about what you can do today without a lot of expense, um, without a lot of effort. We actually spend several hours a week working through our content, our posting. Um, it's, yeah. So you pass everything through a copywriter, like your emails, your... Not everything. I mean, you know, our day-to-day -day emails, things like that, we don't. But when you look at something that we're going to push out for a buyer campaign, and, and here's... So something that multiple people are going to see, that's when you're purchaser, yeah. but one person... Yeah. Yeah, because you're you're wanting that copywriter to help you lead that person and influence them to become a customer. So you don't want it to come out as the, the typical sales letter that, that we typically put out. Um, so it's a really important process to go through, and it's also something that we we set out when we're looking at, hey, should this testimonial where should it be placed in the sequence? Because the copywriters will be able to help you sequence the correct things, come up with the better subject lines. Um, these people are, I mean, they're professional wordsmiths, so they know the NLP, which is the neural, totally botch it, uh, neurological um, language protocol. Um, so you go through that process, and it's, it's where your brain engages. So they know the words and the triggers and the things to help engage, and that's why we try to put it through that process. Because I think it just helps lead people. And again, if you put out, think about this. If a buyer put their email address into five different real estate agents' websites <laughs> wanting to look at a house, five of you going after the same buyer. If everybody's writing in the same sales language and one of them stands out, that's where it's going to take a different turn and the connection. Um, one of the guys this weekend um, that spoke... He was pretty amazing. Um, he's not even a guy, he's a 27-year-old kid. No offense to anybody that's 27 or under. Um, he's 27, he runs not one, two, or three, but four um, multi-seven-figure online companies. And he's a master at this stuff. And so one of the things he talked about is that we tend to not try to build a relationship through our emails when somebody comes into, does everybody know what a, what a funnel is? So when somebody comes into our funnel, we're trying to sell them instantly rather than spending, you know, his process is, I don't ever ask for anything from anybody for the first 30 days. I'm simply adding value to them before I take them down the rabbit hole of trying to get their attention for something that I have to offer. So same thing with us, you start looking at what can I what can I give to create the relationship to add influence? So like for us, it might be one, you know, um, it might be something funny that was done on Instagram. So they kind of relate to this person. Um, there was a video I posted recently, um, again, trying to be relatable. Um, I'm a class clown when it comes down to it. Um, I have no problems posting that stuff. Um, my kids and I had a huge water war in the, in the house. Um, the 30 foot hallway between the bedrooms and the kitchen had about three inches of water in it. And um, we were slip and sliding down the hallway. So there's one picture of my wife coming out with a very uh, disgruntled face. And she's standing there with the camera at the end of the hallway as I slid down in my jeans. Um, that makes you relatable. That makes you vulnerable when it comes down to this is my family life. This is what we do. This is how we do it. So you really want to look at those pieces and how to take some content. And it goes back to planning. What can you plan to connect? So a lot of times... Um, I've got uh, one of my project coordinators. She does social planning, so we keep a file in OneNote, and each week we have scheduled posts that are, one is family, one is business, one is a listing, and one might be a relatable testimonial like this. So you, you do want to take some time to plan your content. Your, your content planning is just as important as your lead follow-up. This is, this is where it comes into the um, building your audience and building your brand and connecting with people over those spaces. And again, there's a lot of people watching, you just don't know it. Any more questions? Yeah. Do you also create a, a YouTube channel or just Instagram? And I've been slow on the YouTube, to be honest with you. I'm working on it. We're trying to, you know, we're slowly putting stuff up there. It's, um, I'll be honest with you, the social media, find something that you like and get really good at it. 
um, before you venture off into the next thing. I'm kind of back and forth between Instagram and Facebook. I do all my stories on Instagram. Um, and then um, every now and again, I comment. So do any of you guys go back and forth between Facebook and Instagram? Because a lot of us have good followings on Facebook, so you don't want to miss it. Um, every couple of days, I just simply go on a Facebook story and go, hey, don't forget to follow me on Instagram because this is where my day-to-day -day life is happening. So then you get the extra follow over there so they can see stories. Um, Facebook is really more my platform to uh, post relatable uh, pieces. So you don't have the two links to your IG and your mm -hmm. Facebook? No, because uh, IG, if you, if you connect your IG to the business platform on IG, you can only connect it to a business page in Facebook. So then you end up with, I don't want my stories and some of the stuff that go through Instagram on my business page on Facebook. Because that started to happen, I'm like, oh, we gotta shut that down. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're at concerts with kids and people are going, what does this have to do with real estate? Mm -hmm. So we, we had to switch that and disconnect it when it comes down to it. I thought there was a switch where you could just turn it off for a minute on a post. Um, you can if you want to pay that close attention to it, okay. or you can go back and turn that stuff off if you want okay. to. For us, it was just easier to turn mm -hmm. it off and not worry about it. Um, so what was it? I think I posted something. I posted a sympathy post on my story to a past client who just lost her husband to suicide, oh. and it ended up on my business page, and I got a call from the principal because it wasn't let out yet that he had passed, so I was like yeah. scrambling to delete <laughs> stuff. So you have to be really conscious of where everything's connected. So, you know, back to answer yours, if, if you have a great following on Facebook, then really focus on that. You know, if you want to enter Instagram, great. If you can at least start with one post a week on Instagram, something of that nature, because you do have different crowds. You know, you have the younger generation that really follows the Instagram. You have the older generation that's really watching Facebook. So you do want to try to connect with both some way, shape, or form. And that's how we've kind of done it, is just by the Insta stories. You know, I probably post one or two things a week on Instagram. Um, but most of my stuff is done through Facebook. Yes? The thing, the money you did with the uh, house that you're having with that woman, is that yeah. Instagram? Um, no, that video was actually just produced yesterday. So what'll happen, and this is the way to kind of connect that stuff on longer videos, is you can connect them through to like, YouTube, so that'll t that'll go to Instagram, but and it'll be promoted, but you only see sixty seconds of it, and then it'll cut off. So I haven't really got a clue about Instagram. So okay. Basically, uh, that's when you tell your stories on Instagram, mm -hmm. and your limits about sixty seconds. So, so when you tell stories, you have fifteen second intervals on Instagram, on stories. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. When you're doing stories, you can post a picture, write some stuff on it, and then you can do little 15 second clips. Like follow ups? Um, yeah, I mean, again, like this this morning I did the dog video, it was like 15 seconds. Um, and you can write some things over top of it. Um, Instagram itself, when you post, limits you to 60 seconds. Okay, what's the 15 second thing? The 15 second interval is when you're doing stories, because stories are something that'll disappear in 24 hours. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So you're just uh, so you're trying to get your story in within 24 hours and 15 second intervals. No, your so the way stories work is it's really about just kind of your day to day stuff. So like this morning, um, it, it's it's a connection piece. So this morning I posted a dog at 5:18 a.m. that wouldn't come over and see me. So I took a picture of him, posted on it, and just said good morning Instagram. And then it went on to the next thing, which was another little 15 second interval that I tagged my home group in that I'm prepping for today's class, come out and see us. You know, we're telling through stories. So it was only 15 seconds. And then I posted another one of the dogs fighting. It just, again, it's just kind of showing me randomly throughout the day. Yeah. Um, that's just a day-to-day -day connection. And the 60 second one is what? So when you're doing a full post on Instagram. So if you're gonna add something new to Instagram as a post, your you only have 60 seconds that's the limit of the video and how do people find you on instagram most of the time through asking like i'm about to do <laughs> so most of the people so when you're um sharing things or sending out emails it might be a ps don't forget to connect with me on like my signature has ps don't forget to connect with me on instagram if you want to see the shenanigans on my day-to-day -day life let me ask you this then is this something like let's say you uh you, you meet a person and don't know the person that well, or yeah. that you're speaking or whatever. So this is some way to 
kind of introduce people to you. In other words, you can't be hanging out with that person all the time, so that person gets to know you through 15 second intervals daily if you want. Yep. So in other words, so if, you, if you meet somebody, well, that person sounds kind of interesting, you want to about what they're about, you're not going to, you know, be friends and be friends, spend all this time with them. You can go on Instagram and get an idea of their life just like, oh, I see. Yep. So that gives them a, a, a look into your life without getting to know the person. Well, it, it gives you a chance for somebody to get to know you. Right depending on the amount you're posting or the amount you're doing in so stories. So for instance, um, our sales letter that goes out early on is very short and it simply just says, hey, I'm thankful you came to our page and I hope that, um, I forget all the wording in it because the copywriter was much better at it. Um, I know we don't know each other and I want to get to know you better, but first I want you to introduce you to me. So check me out on Facebook and Instagram, friend me. Um, my accounts aren't private, so somebody doesn't have to friend me to go look to see who I am. And so it gives them an instant, hey, I kind of like what this guy's posting, or I don't, and then you might see the friend request. And a lot of times when I meet somebody new, it's a polite thing to ask, hey, you know what, can I connect with you on Instagram? Because a lot of people, we're doing a lot of business through um, Facebook Messenger so we're right now. So basically asking a person who'd like to get to know you, let me see you on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is that what you need? You have all the high quality stuff? Well, I mean, you want to post the high quality stuff. I mean, the stories are done from your phone. The high quality stuff is when you're scheduling your posts and you're really thinking oh, about what you're doing. Okay. So the, the daily stuff is not a big deal. No. The daily stuff is just here's who I am. Um, you know, here's how I connect with you. Here's how I relate with you. Um, it also, I mean, when you look at some people's stories, you may go, there's no way I would buy a house from this guy. <laughs> you know, seriously. I mean, we've all seen that. I mean, how many pictures have we seen on Facebook and Instagram? You're like, who let this guy get a real estate license? Um, that's just unfortunately the nature of our business. They pass them out better than uh, driver's license. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a connection piece. We really use it, again, to build audience. That's what it's there for. When you get back to boosting your posts... Boosting your posts or getting in front of more people, and you guys understand the difference between ads and boosts, right? You know, when you when you target a Facebook ad, you're targeting a demographic, you're targeting an area, you're targeting a location. You can even target based on words, buyers, sellers, Phoenix Real Estate, you can target based on those. So you're guessing that Facebook's algorithm is going to get you in front of somebody that might be doing that. The boosts, you can take, like for instance, when I do our boost, we have a 15 mile circumference around the office, and I boost to that 15 miles throughout, and I let that post run for two weeks, and I'll spend about 250 bucks, which is about $10, and it's about $15 a day. It's just randomly stuff that shows up in somebody's feed. You know those things you get, you're like, why did I get this? Because what happens is, is Facebook, if you search, Phoenix Homes, or you search the Peoria zip code or something like that. Peoria. And I, what's that? Peoria. Yep. And it's tracking all of those metrics. So then it's pushing. Well, that stuff pops up. How the hell did they yes. Got big data. Yeah. Or when you randomly, um, I think the other night I randomly ran into a client from a couple of years ago. We took a selfie. I tagged her, and the next thing you know, all of her stuff is showing up on the top of my feet. Mm -hmm. And how do you get rid of that? <laughs> <laughs> There's a setting for that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I've had success with YouTube and if you use it as educational, mm -hmm. um, in other words, um, I'm targeting like baby boomers and seniors, you know, state sales and stuff. So I have a channel called, you know, Baby Boomers. So I've got different playlists and different things. Yeah. And where it comes in handy, and if you use, then I took a class on making sure you did the right keywords. Mm -hmm. I had one video I did on the community of Grandma, I had like 600 views. Right. And, and I went in and I put in all the right keywords. Two days later, I had 1,800. Now yeah. it's up to 8,000. So it just cooks yeah. right? continuously. But the advantage is after a while, and you've got a few videos in there, if somebody Googles your name, you will show up. Yep. Um, there's going to be a string of videos if somebody Googles your name. I've had people um, at open houses say, I'm just going to take your business card, I'm not signing up, I'm going. They've gone home and Googled me. And all these videos show. Right. We've actually got. It's just another leg in the street. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, that's another great place if you guys are looking for some other cheap advertising. Um, YouTube ads. So you get somebody to make a small, you know, 30 second ad. 
Um, YouTube's advertisements, so you know the annoying ads that come up and you can't wait to get skipped. Mm -hmm. um, I caught myself the other day looking at presentation mm -hmm. stuff and um, I watched one all the way through and then clicked on it. YouTube only charges you if somebody views 10 seconds of the ad or more. So, you know, when and they'll run it on real estate things when somebody clicks on house buying, some of those things. So you may want to look at the YouTube ads, they're super inexpensive and you're only, you only pay for them watching more than 10 seconds of the video. So maybe another good platform to consider uh, for leads. And YouTube's also a great place just when it comes, like you said, the educational piece. So you're putting different things together. Um, we do um, an episode a month right now uh, that Josiah edits for us where Erica, our listening partner, um, we called it America in the House. And uh, it's a cute little video. We spend about five minutes producing it. Um, we showcase one house a month on it. And we have that on our YouTube that we'll send out to Facebook or Instagram to where you can watch the rest of it on our webpage or you can sign up to subscribe. So there's different ways to really look at that. And again, it's a lot of what I've learned is watching the influencers. So all those things you guys see online where you get to somebody's landing page and you put in your email address and then it starts the funnel, I suggest that you follow a couple of those things and watch the funnel, watch what they're doing. Um, I think it's one of the things that could be instrumental in anybody's business in real estate. Um, we're in the process of the funnel pieces. So I know that we have Boomtown and Sync and all these other things that are creating that, but the funnels are pretty crazy on how they operate, um, especially when you get into the details of what somebody clicks on, which might send them one way through the funnel versus another way through the funnel based on their interests. So like for our funnel, we're looking at, you know, are they interested in investing? Are they interested in first time home buying? So it'll take them different routes through the funnel um, to ultimately lead them to the right sales copy in order to guide them to the right process. That is, I'm all up. Okay. Is there any questions? Um, so one of the things, if you guys, um, let's see if I can get this thing back on. That's right. You want No, that's right. Um, you know, if you want to see some of the stuff that we do, um, follow us on Facebook. Um, it's Steve Valentine on Facebook, and then Instagram at Steve D Valentine. And then also, if you have any curiosity in um, the Limitless Project on my website, which is my personal, not tied to the real estate side, uh, it's stevedvalentine.com. That one is actually going through and showing agents the investment side of real estate, the ways that they can invest, the way they can provide different solutions for their clients. Um, it's something that you know I really enjoy. Again, it goes back to my dad's story. Um, when my dad passed, he spent more than more than forty million dollars trustee sale for certain investors um, during the 08, 09 period, but not once did he buy one single home for himself. Wow. And so when he died, um, I refused to see that happen all over again. And so it was kind of one of those passions that 95% of real estate agents don't own an investment property, nor do they invest, and yet we have the most leads and opportunities coming in front of us on a day-to-day -day basis, and we just don't know how. And so the last four years, I really figured out how. I figured out some creative solutions, some things. Um, we're, we're in front of people every day. Um, Gail, funny thing about Gail, um, she was a referral from a lender that I know. She literally, she needed a certain number out of her house. I sat down with her. I spent literally 15 minutes in her house. And I'm like, this number will work. I'm all in. And um, she said, well, if I don't sell it to this family friend, then I'm like, well, just keep me as a backup. And she loved the conversation we had. What her thing was is she just wanted to sell the house and do the open door type model, but she didn't want to go through that process. And um, that was an opportunity. I totally would have kept that house as a rental because it was being purchased at about $50,000 below market didn't need a lot of work, but it was an opportunity that most of us would typically look at as a listing or something of that nature and not know how to discover the rest of that process. Um, so that's what the Limitless Project is about. It's just, uh, it's really about educating agents on how to invest in themselves. I call it putting on the oxygen mask on yourself first. Um, 
you know, it's just, it's really important that you do that because we're in a space that can create a lot of net worth at the end of the day and we don't have 401ks and retirements. So that's, that was our ultimate goal, which then turned me into wanting to share with you guys the ultimate goal, which is how do I invest? Um, so that's what the Limitless Project is, if you're curious about that at all. Well, I appreciate you guys' time. I hope that it was useful, helpful, um, and uh, really work on your stories. The stories are really where you're gonna have that connection with your clients. So I appreciate you coming in and uh, hanging out this afternoon. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.